Good morning. Do you know what time of year it is? The weather is warming up, grass is growing, and everything is green and fresh. What a great time to be outside enjoying nature. Naturally, that means it's final seasons. We are stuck inside working on school. Yay! For one of my programming classes, I was posed with a pretty simple final assignment. Make a game or project showing what we've learned in that class. Pretty simple. Oh, and we had to make it in Scratch. After about a day of thinking, I came up with a great idea. Why not remake my mobile game, Leap in the Right Direction, in Scratch? This would be a fun project that wouldn't be too hard, and in my opinion, would be pretty. So let's get to work. Right off the bat, I lied to you. I'm not actually using Scratch for this project. For those of you who don't know, Scratch is a really simple beginner program where you can create games and projects using block code. Um, overall, it's a pretty sweet system to learn programming concepts and basics. But remember, I'm not using Scratch. I'm using Snap. Now, if Scratch is the goody two-shoes kid in the neighborhood who everyone likes, then Snap is your weird cousin from the city. He's a little bit stranger, a little darker around the edges, you know, looks like he's been through some stuff. Functionally, Snap works almost exactly the same as Scratch. I actually looked it up, and it's actually built on the Scratch source code, so it's super similar. But my class requires it, so that's why I'm using it. Um, if I refer to Snap as Scratch, then remember, I probably mean Snap. Well, enough of that. Let's get to work. So getting into Snap, it's pretty bare bone. But let's get the frog physics and jumping working. If you don't know what game I'm going for, I want to remake a bare bones version of my mobile game, Leap in the Right Direction, a fun physics-based platformer that you can actually download right now. I'll have the link below. Well, anyways, a big part of this game is the physics, so let's get started with that. Now in Unity, I would just throw on a rigid body and call it a day with the physics. But, well, I don't have that luxury in Snap. So you know what time it is? Time to write my own physics engine. Yay! Now, this sounds scary, but for my application, it wasn't that bad. For this use case, we can separate out the vertical movement and the horizontal movement. So, let's start with the vertical movement. This is pretty simple. If the player isn't on the ground, then change its velocity by a gravity force. And if the player is on the ground, then you can just set its vertical velocity to zero. Okay, now we have the player jumping. Great! The horizontal movement was pretty much the same. If you're on the ground, then add a friction force that slows you down. And if you hit a wall, then bounce off it by flipping the velocity. Well, after not much work, I have physics. Yay! The player is bouncing around and colliding with everything. Great. Well, now that we have the base physics, let's get the iconic froggy controls in here. This wasn't that hard. I had to do a little bit of math to clamp the drag back line around the circle, but we got it there in the end. Now, the frog was bouncing around great. I got the jump animations in, and honestly, if you just showed this to me, then I would have no clue that it's made in scratch. Okay, so at this point, we have the core movement, but it's not much of a game. While you can bounce around, there's no point to anything. So let's get a game loop in here. Instead of making the core game loop of the original game, I decided to mix it up. Instead of climbing through one big level, the level would scroll and randomly generate so you'd have to try and keep up with it without getting forced off the screen. This way, I don't have to hand rate a huge level and it changes the entire feel of the game. So let's get to work. First, I had to add some side columns to block off my edge and adjust the physics to work with that. Um, please excuse my programmer art. From here, I started on the moving platforms. 
For this, I drew one big platform with two gaps in it. The way that this would work is we'd have a parent object at the top, which would go to a random position left to right, then set off a clone scrolling down on the screen for the player to dodge and jump on. After a bit of work, this was scrolling. Now let's see how this works with the physics. Oh, yeah, that's not the best. Let's see what's actually happening here. Well, it doesn't take a genius to realize that the platforms are moving out from underneath the player. He first lands on the platform and thinks he's on the ground. Then the ground moves out from under him and he starts falling again. After he falls, he eventually hits back to the platform and continues this whole loop over and over. Well, how am I going to fix this problem? Um, the easy solution to this problem is to detect if you're landed on the platform, and if you are, just move the player down with the platforms. Well, I guess let's try the solution. After a bunch of work, honestly, it wasn't the best. While it seemed simple in theory, it just didn't work. And this is where the limited engine comes into play. Snap has no advanced tools to see or change what scripts happen first, so a lot of what I had written just wouldn't work. Eventually, after like a solid hour or two of work, I finally gave up and just said, good enough. The solution isn't perfect. If you look close, then you can see the player sinks in a little bit far into the moving platforms, and if you hit the corners at the right angle, it pretty much breaks completely. But that's neither here nor there. Moving on. So I had the core of the game working. You can move around, collide with everything, and dodge the platforms. Now it's just time to get this drab programmer art of here and make everything look pretty. For the art, I just opened my document I already had for the game, got together a group of blocks out of the art I had already drawn, and exported it. Back in Snap, I put in all the art. It got all compressed in this process, which kinda sucks, but that's just another limitation of this engine. I just did a couple of settings around the new art, and it was back up and running. Just time to get a little bit of game polish. Back in Photoshop, I made a couple of buttons and titles to sprinkle around the menus. I made a start screen with this game's title, Leaping Up. Get it? Because it's a play on leap in the right direction, but you're only moving up? Yeah, I know, it's kind of dumb. But hey, I was tired and I had a due date for this assignment. I made a death screen if you got crushed at the bottom of the screen. And of course, a plug to my real game leap in the right direction. Which I mean, if you haven't downloaded at this point, you probably should, so yeah. Well, that's about it. So let's give the game a look. Well, that's my game. If you want to check it out for yourself, I'll have a link down in the description below. I know the game was pretty simple, but it was a really good challenge to make and snap, and overall, it was super fun to make. I submitted this project to my class, and now we'll see what grade I get. Thanks to the like three of you who stayed this long in the video, it really means a ton to me. Um, if you have any questions or anything that you want to see from me, then let me know in the comments section down below. I really do read and answer every single one. Trust me, you can try it for yourself. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, then like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't, or whatever. I'm not your mom. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.